Uh, all trading is fine as long as you understand that they are trash. When you realize you can trade them to make more Bitcoin, it's okay. Uh, I mean, I've kind of always had that theory that you can make more money with alts and then convert it into Bitcoin. And you can. It's just much more risky. And I'll... I, I feel like I've been fairly consistent with my messages on the show, what, you know, my theories are around things. But on that, I think that it's very important that you, if you're doing that, you have your 90% stack of your Bitcoin that you never sell, you never touch, you never do anything with that. Whatever Bitcoin you have, you take 90% of that stack and that's what you keep for the rest of your life. And you pass it on to your kids and they pass it on to their kids. It's like having a, you know, a thousand acres of land here. It's the exact same thing. That's what you keep forever. But then you, you know, you can play around with some other things. Maybe you do some corn futures, that kind of stuff, right? But you keep your main asset there. That's what your Bitcoin is, your 90%. And it's the same with altcoins. If you want to take 5% of whatever you have right now, buy some altcoins with it. Just be aware that there's risks there. You could lose that very easily. You're not going to lose it with Bitcoin, but you could lose it there. And then, yeah, if that's your goal to move to get more Bitcoin, that's a good way to do it. Probably what I would suggest, instead of spending so much time and energy doing that, looking at the altcoins every day, is do something productive. Add value. Start doing things for people and charging them Bitcoin for it. That's a good way to make more, more Bitcoin too. Take that time that you'd put into trading altcoins and add value to people. And earn Bitcoin for that. There you go. <clears throat> Noah says I had a lot of a lot of alts, but I sold them all for Bitcoin in 2022 and never looked back. It's a good strategy. Good strategy. <clears throat> yeah, that's exactly what it is. King says I, I think altcoins is just horse betting. It is. Absolutely is. I have an altcoin that went up. 50%, it's up 150% this year. I have no idea why. None. I mean, I get what they're doing there. I understand the company. That's why I still hold it. But there wasn't anything like a big piece of news that was like game changing that should cause that 150% move. But it did. So there you go. And with that, with that, I want to find this... Uh, we're going to move over to living in the future right away. We're going to talk about things because somebody had a question the other day in terms of this was the question. What are, what are the best practices for holding on to your backup phrase for keeping it safe in your house? And she said, I lose a lot of sleep over this at night because I don't know if I'm doing it properly. So that's what we're going to be talking about on the living in the future show today. We're going to just logically talk through what can happen here in terms of the samurai news and, and the real crackdown of privacy here. And then we're going to give some suggestions on, on how to the best practices for keeping your backup phrase. There's so many different things to be aware of there. Yeah, you write it down, but where do you put it from there? What happens if this happens to your, your backup phrase? There, there's many different things there. So that's what we're going to talk about on the living in the future show today, because I don't want to talk about it here on YouTube for obvious reasons, but uh, that's that. So let's, I'm gonna find this quickly here. I think it'll be pretty quick. I got the guy's name at least. So this will be the last thing we talk about today, unless there's any more comments or questions that anybody wants to discuss. And then we'll hop over to living in the future. And for that, anytime you ever want to find info on living in the future, get a hold of me, you can always just look in the description. All of my information is in there. All my contact stuff, all the links. So here it is right here. I'll bring it up. I'll read it. But one last thing before we go here, because the, the Q&As, one thing I've been doing with it is I'm going to start putting the, the Bitcoin Q&As. I'm going to have it sponsored by the Wildlife Podcast. So they're a sponsor of the show, but they're going to be the official sponsor now of the Q&A. And the reason I'm putting them the sponsor is the Q&A is because the, she's talking about homeschooling kids. And the one thing if I kind of look back on my 
journey to get here in my life to get here. The one thing that I didn't do enough of in life was ask questions. I didn't, I just put all of my trust into people because I just thought, you know, everybody's good. Everybody's good. And they have my best intentions in mind. So I, I think that what Alex is talking about on the wildlife podcast in terms of homeschooling, doing things a little bit different than we've traditionally done and just asking questions, asking questions. I think that's a very underrated aspect of life. So make sure to check out Alex's podcast. It's a great podcast if you are somebody with kids or thinking about having kids and wondering what your kid's school's life is going to be. She has about 20, 30 episodes on there, all very good information and just conversations just like this, talking through things and giving tips, giving ideas, um, services people can use and resources. So that is the wildlife podcast. There's also a link in the description for Alex's podcast. And so I just wanted to give a big shout out to her today for asking questions and for talking about this stuff. It's so important. Joe Poutine, what a name. Yes, th this is legit. And this is what we're going to be talking about on the living in the future today. Because 